Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances of Lecture Shri Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to morning Bhagavatam class. This morning we will be discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, chapter 2, verse 25. And the chapter is entitled Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And the class will be given by His Holiness Chandramali Swami. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Haribo Maharaj. I'm here. You can start when you like, Maharaj. Okay, I think we got a dozen surrendered souls somewhere online. And I'm sure more will be rolling in. Yes, probably. That's what they'll do, just roll in. <laughs> <laughs> Let me roll out of bed and roll it over to the computer. <laughs> I was remembering your, your comment about this few months ago. They roll out of bed and roll it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good way to start the day. Anyway, you can, after, after my class, everything will obviously get better. <laughs> after your class march is always a day of meditation we really i know i do really think about your classes and your comments so thank you so much for always giving us your mercy it means it's not a day of meditation a day of mediation <laughs> <laughs> but the mind Mara, the mind is such a rascal yeah mine today is uh Completely gone. I don't know where it is. If you see it, just let me know. I'll go. I'll pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> You're so kind, Maharaj. <laughs> it's, it's, it's out to lunch today. <laughs> it's been out to lunch all day. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't it close to lunchtime for you there, Maharaj? Uh, I usually starve in order to do, to do your program, so yeah. <laughs> 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 I was just wondering. Yeah, it's one o'clock here now. Five hours. Okay. No, six. Sorry, six. Jesus, yes. Six hours difference. Yeah. And normally, you know, you would start an hour later, so that would definitely destroy my whole lunch. <laughs> I am so sorry, Mark. <laughs> This is this is doable because this is what I do every day. But if it was another hour later, <laughs> it would be like it would mess it up. Well, you would probably see me, you know, <laughs> rushing through the class. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already taking lunch at two thirty, so. If I take it any later, I mean, an hour later would be like mid, almost early evening, you know. Two thirty, so which means it will be about uh, eight thirty. Yeah, eight thirty. Okay, definitely. Yeah, approximately that's what time. I mean, that's any later than that. It's too late. It's too late. Yeah, actually, lunchtime is supposed to be around twelve thirty. That's the ideal. That's what they say. Yes, Maharaj. 12.30, 1 o'clock, the absolute latest. Breakfast should be between 7.30 and 8.30, they say. Mm. Mm. And sometimes we take breakfast at 10 and then lunch at 4. <laughs> <laughs> no, wonder, no wonder we have so many problems. <laughs> So many health challenges. All right. So let's get philosophical here. And yes, Maharaj. <laughs> see what happens. Okay. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaur Bhakti Vrindam Bhakti Yoga Bhakti Paya Yanhara Darsana Surya ye na sabigraha deha deka deva gana. Through their service, devotees see that the personality of Godhead 
just as the denizens of heaven see the personality of the sun. Hmm. Purport. Go up, go, go up a little higher so we can see the whole purport. There you go. Okay. The supreme personality of Godhead has an eternal form, which cannot be seen by material eyes or mental speculation. Only by transcendental devotional service can one understand the transcendental form of the Lord. The comparison is made here to the qualification for viewing the personal features of the sun god. The sun god is a person who, although not visible to our eyes, is seen from the higher planets by the demigods, whose eyes are suitable for seeing through the glaring sunshine that surrounds him. Every planet has its own atmosphere according to the influence of the arrangement of material nature. It is therefore necessary to have a particular type of bodily construction to reach a particular planet. The inhabitants of earth may be able to reach the moon, but the inhabitants of heaven can reach even the fiery sphere called the sun. What is impossible for man on earth is easy for the demigods in heaven because of their different bodies. Similarly, to see the Supreme Lord, one must have the spiritual eyes of devotional service. The personality of God is unapproachable by those who are habituated to speculation about the absolute truth in terms of experimental scientific thought without reference to the transcendental vibration. The ascending approach of the absolute truth ends in the realization of impersonal Brahman and the localized Paramatma, but not the supreme transcendental personality. Namaste, Saraswati Deve, Gaudamani Pacharine, Nirvase, Sasunya Vari, Pasyat Pyade Satarine, Panchakalpa, Tarubhisya, Kripa, Sindhuve, Bajapati, Taranam, Bhavane, Vyo, Vaishnavi, Vyo, Namaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Nityananda, Sri Advaita, Gadadhar, Sri Vasadi, Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, <coughs> Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, Premanjrita Bhakti Vilo Chanena Santasa Daiva Deyesha Vilo Kriyanti Yam Shama Sunda Chinta Guna Sarupam only when the eyes are smeared with the ointment of the motion can actually one perceive the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the quality of the eyes is a ointment spread upon the eyes, which is known as love. <laughs> um, when eyes are filled with love for the Supreme Lord, then one can see the Lord. And that means the heart has to be filled with love and the eyes will reflect that, that the nature of the heart's mood. And that's the only way. And Krishna also gives other concessions, he says. He says to Arjuna, uh, only by undivided devotional service can I be seen directly and thus, uh, only by done devotional service can I be seen standing before you and thus be seen directly. Only in this way can you enter into the mysteries of my understanding. Krishna tells that to Arjuna, though he's giving the, the formula for seeing him pure devotional service undivided, unmotivated devotional service. And that is the qualification for seeing the Lord. The Lord has a transcendental form and his form is everywhere. 
it's actually but only those who have the eyes can actually see mm, a pure devotee of the lord can actually he says that one who is on the platform of pure devotion sees the form of these the forms that are existing in this world such as trees and various types of natural arrangements mountains but within that they actually see the form of the lord within the different forms of this world because their eyes are filled with devotion to krishna therefore they're seeing krishna everywhere directly in his personal form and the comparisons is made here that because the demigods have the eyes to see past the glare of the sun god, they can see the sun god. Well, we don't have, even from a material point of view, we don't have those eyes. And therefore, everything it depends on devotion. And Prabhupada wants to say that this devotion is coming not from the ascending process but from the descending process to approach god from the descending process means to know god to approach god from the unsending ascending process means to engage in speculation which leads as Prabhupada says to realization at best now this is at best now even that approach may also end in voidism, but it ends in impersonal Brahman realization or even higher localized power. In other words, one can realize that God is everywhere through his energy. One can realize that God is everywhere in the hearts of the living entities, but one cannot see the Lord in his personal transcendental form as Krishna or any of the incarnations of the Lord. So, therefore, the Lord, uh, the Lord remains hidden until one comes to pure devotional service. But He's there. The fact that someone is hidden doesn't mean they don't; they're not present. You can be, you can be in the room with someone, and someone is hiding behind something, maybe the couch or something. You can't see them. That doesn't mean they're not in the room. So Krishna is with us every moment through his localized paramatma within the heart, through his all-pervading energy as the uh, Brahman effulgence. But we can't see him because we're not qualified. Therefore, one has to qualify themselves to see the Lord. And that is pure devotional service. And the Prabhupada said one must have spiritual eyes. Spiritual eyes are described in that verse, Premanjari, Premanjari, Bhakti Vilochanena, the Santasa Daiva Rudayeshi, the Alokayanti. Prabhupada likes to quote that verse from Brahma Samhita, explaining that, yeah, only by devotion, only by pure devotion, only by love. Can Krishna be seen? But Krishna has a form, and his original form is the source of all existence. Sometimes the impersonalists they say, well, if you form if you put God into a form, then you limit him because forms are limited, limited and the all-pervading energy is everywhere, and therefore God is everywhere, and therefore he is he is uh, he is existing as energy everywhere, or what they say, the Brahman effulgence. We agree that's true, but that's 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 an, an emanation of him. His form is not like a material form. The material form is limited and changeable. His form is not, is, uh, not subject to change unless he wants to change it himself in order to appear in a different way. But even when he changes, his original form remains. He expands himself through his form into another form. So in, within Krishna, 
uh, everything exists because everything is Krishna and all the energies and all of the forms exist within the form of Krishna. Krishna is the original form. He's called Govindam, Govindam Adi Purusham Tamaham Vajami. He's Sarva Karna Karnam. He's the original form. He's a form that, that manifests all other forms and all other energies. So therefore, the when the impersonalists say that form is limited, they only they're, they're referring to material form. They're not referring to material form, but they're actually describing material form, and Krishna's form is not material. It's pure spiritual existence, which is not limited to time, place, and circumstances, nor encumbered by the material energy. But that takes intelligence and that takes devotion to realize that. And therefore, speculation on the absolute truth leaves one with the absolute truth being uh, impersonal. But the impersonal aspect of the absolute truth is compared by using the example of the sun. The sun is the localized disk within the universe. It's in one place, although it moves, it's still always in one place as it moves. It's not in all places at once. But what's in all places at once is the, the Lord's energy, the sun's energy, which is the sunshine. So the energy of the Lord is existing everywhere, but the localized aspect of the sun is in one place. The same way Krishna exists in his in the spiritual world, and but he exists variously through the material creation in his unmanifested energy as, as the Brahman effulgence. But even within the Brahman effulgence, he can appear within his personal form if he so desires. In other words, he's not limited by anything material. Now, this is the nature of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And those who are, those who want to know God have to worship God according to the instructions given by the bona fide spiritual master and the scriptures. And the scriptures say, Vedanti tat tat vad vidyam jadyam avdayam brahmeti paramat meti bhagavan eti subjate that the absolute truth is one, but it has three aspects to it. Although it's one, it manifests itself in three different ways. There's Brahman effulgence, Paramatma localized, and uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So the complete understanding of the absolute truth is Krishna, the Personality of Godhead. But People don't want to worship the impersonal. I mean, the personal. They want to. They want to. Uh, they want to see God or understand God through the impersonal. Why? Because it doesn't require any commitment on their part. When you worship a person, then you have to follow the person. Person means words, intelligence, activities, characteristics, qualities and interactions. So basically they're envious of God and therefore rather than want to deal with Krishna on a personal level and develop a loving relationship with him, they want to reject Krishna and just worship his all-pervading energy, which comes in the form of renouncing everything material. But because there is no loving relationship with the personality of Godhead, and they, those who accept the impersonal as the highest manifestation of the absolute truth never really enjoy spiritual life because enjoyment comes with reciprocation in a loving way with the person. And therefore, they have ruled out that God is a person and therefore, all they can do is get a little detachment from material energy and call that spiritual realization. <laughs> but devotees, they're eager to go to the temple to see the deity of the Lord, knowing the deity is none different than the Lord. 
when they see a picture of the Lord, they don't say, oh, it's just a picture. No, they actually say that this is the Lord who has appeared in, a, in, in his personal form in the form of a picture. So the devotee wants to see Krishna in his beautiful transcendental form. And well, in any of the other manifestations of Krishna, even Lord Nishringadeva, although he appears to be fierce at times, he is also quite attractive. He is very beautiful. When we uh, develop an attraction for Lord Nishringadeva, the manifestation or the result of that attraction is that although he may look fierce, he has a sense of beauty about him that is very, very prominent in his appearance. And that beauty attracts the devotees and that fierceness uh, foils the demon's attempt to lord it over material energy. So Prabhupada said, don't try to see God, but try to work in such a way that God wants to see you. He gives the example of a man who works in a particular uh, job, and he's every year for 18 years, he comes on time, does his work nicely, gets along with his co-workers, and um, he has a perfect work record. And so after some time, the, the proprietor of the establishment talks to the, uh, the local head of the operations and says, well, I wanna meet this man. So, so he comes and maybe he meets him, congratulates him for his exemplary activities in working and maybe he also gives him a gift and maybe a raise. So yeah, so Krishna is like that. When he sees that the devotee is just eager to serve, and Krishna may just to give pleasure to his devotee appears to his devotee just to please his devotee. Uh, that is Krishna. But he's always there with us, whether we can see him or not, we should know he is there. Not only do we know, we can feel it. When we're not Krishna conscious, we can know what it's like. And when we're Krishna conscious, we can see the difference. There's a qualitative difference in our consciousness when we are connected to Krishna and when we are connected to Maya. <laughs> and Prabhupada talks about the moon. On the different planets, there are different devas, different higher beings. This universe is not devoid of living entities. We used to grow up in school thinking that there's only, there's only people on the earth and the rest of the stuff that you see up in the sky is just decorations for the sky, that's all it is. There's nothing more than that. Somebody pasted some stars and some planets in the cosmos, and there's nobody there. <laughs> it's like, when you think about it, it's totally ridiculous. But that's our small mindedness, and that's our egoistic idea that everything happens on Earth because I'm on Earth. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> and, but, Nothing is going on outside of that. So when they went to the moon, they, they just landed and they said all they found was rocks and dust. <laughs> and uh, one of the, uh, you know, of course it, it leaked out that that was they, the whole thing was a show on, on television. And what they did was they took pictures of the Arizona desert and they said, you know, giant step for man, first step for giant step for mankind, and so many nice eulogies. We landed on the moon. <laughs> what they all they did was take taxpayers' money and threw it away <laughs> and did done nothing about it. 
um, Baba said, the moon is a highly developed civilization. There are high developed beings there. They're higher than what's on earth. The moon is uh, cold. It's a, it has a cold atmosphere and it reflects the light of the sun to give it a, uh, an aura of uh, light around it. But the, but the, uh, the moon is actually cold. But it is a higher planet and there are living beings there. There are living beings on the sun too. They have their civilizations more advanced than we are. And their bodies are made of fire, that's all. As our bodies are made of earth, their bodies are made of fire. You go into the ocean, the fishes, their bodies are made for the water. Certain bodies are made for air. So the atmosphere is different, but and the bodies that live in that atmosphere complement that atmosphere. It's not that because uh, if I go into fire, I will die. It doesn't mean anyone else can't have a fiery body. So everywhere in creation, there is life. Unlimited amounts of living entities, according to the different level of consciousness. According to the consciousness, there are level of beings on all planets all throughout the existence. Just like on this planet, you'll see there's different levels of consciousness. And according to the level of consciousness, people live in a certain way. And so those who are wealthy, they have that. Their consciousness is focused on developing material energy and enjoying it. And so they have a particular li lifestyle. And you see even, even below the human beings, when the consciousness is like a pig, then the constant, then the pig, he, what does he do? He wallows in stool. If you give him halva, he spits it out. He wants stool. So, yeah, every, there, there is consciousness, and consciousness reflects the atmosphere by which people reside in. So, there are higher consciousness, and then if you go below the earth and you go down to the lower planets, there's lower consciousness. And there's even lower consciousness amongst beings on this level, even within the species. There are more developed human beings, and then there's others that are no better than animals. So everything is based on consciousness. But the entire creation is full of living entities. Even within your room, although you can't see it, there are so many microscopic germs floating in the atmosphere. And they are also living entities, but you, but you are not able to see them. So yeah, life is everywhere. Even within our own body, there are so many living entities within our own body, and germs and worms and so many other nice things in there. And, uh, but because we, the living entity is the prominent soul which sits in the heart, and that is the one that is you. But you should know that every time you take prashadam, you're feeding all the living entities in your body, they're getting the benefit of prashadam. When you chant the holy names, they are also getting the benefit of hearing the sound vibration, although they may not be able to understand it, the vibration still purifies these living entities in your own body. So to become Krishna conscious means you're helping so many living entities who you can't even see existing even in your within your own body. Well, there's life everywhere. And the supreme source of life is a person, Ishwara Parma Krishna Satchirananda Vigraha Nadirada Govinda Sarvakaranda. He is the source of everything and he is the maintainer of everything. And when it's time, he is the destroyer of everything. Okay. He is time, as Krishna says, I am time. 
So time takes away everything. Time moves material energy from one position to another position. Time is a very powerful factor. That time is Krishna. Krishna says, I am time. I'm in time in the form of death, which comes to take away everything. So Krishna is everything in different forms, but his original form as the Supreme Personality of Godhead is the lovable and most uh, attractive form. And it's the original form of Krishna in Sri Vrindavan Dham. And our duty as devotees is to awaken our attraction for Krishna by hearing about his transcendental pastimes in the spiritual realms, especially in Sri Vrindavan Dham. Okay, so we can end here. Thank you so much, Maharaj, um, for such a nice class and having us um, really reflect on our devotional service. Because as, as you said, that in, in order for us to really um, attract the Lord, we have to be engaged in devotional service. So thank you so much for sharing that. We'd like to ask devotees if any questions, any uh, clarification or comments, please, you can either... Um, unmute you. Actually, if you could just raise your hand because we have 27 devotees and I would like to call on the devotees as they raise their hand. So there's no confusion. Um, Marge, if, if I can ask a question while the voice are thinking, as you were saying, Marge, early in your class that um, the, the Lord is hidden from us until we reach the level of pure devotional service. And I, I know from myself, Marge, that I'm nowhere close to that. How can we get to that level? And when will, and if until we are not at that level, will the Lord continue to hide from us? From me, I should say. Yeah, just keep hearing about Krishna. That's all. Mm. The more you hear about him, because his name, form, and qualities, pastimes are none different than him. You're actually connecting with him through these different aspects of his existence, especially his pastimes. And so you can get, you get attracted to Krishna through his pastimes and through his qualities, through his name. These are ways to get attracted to Krishna. We see a picture of Krishna and we get attracted. We see a picture of Jagannath, we get attracted. So yeah, there is that attractive feature of Krishna. That's why he's called Krishna, because he's all attractive. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Sri Devi, for reminding me to end the share screen. Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, the boys can turn on their videos if they like. That's a humble request from Maharaj if we can turn our videos on so that we are not hidden, unless if you're at work or driving, please do so. Arival. If anyone else has a question, please do ask. This is such a wonderful class of um, how to attract the Lord. Maharaj, as, as you are also um, uh, speaking about hearing, and the more that we hear the glories of the Lord, the more we get attracted. And at the same time, I, you know, I was also told that we want to do service where uh, uh, that the Lord is attracted as opposed to we try to attract the Lord. How can we actually under, um, really understand that concept? Because sometimes fallen conditioned souls, we try to be in the limelight. <laughs> the limelight <laughs> lack of better word Maharaj <laughs> causes you to become <laughs> the limelight is what this means uh, and ends in what does it end in it ends in frustration that's all 
that's the material, the material where everyone wants to be the center. And therefore, there's so many centers, and that's why people are always clashing. Devotees can get along because no devotees trying to be in the center, and they're just trying to put Krishna in the center. So when devotees are together, they're just trying to bring Krishna into the center. And then there is not like my ego battling with your ego. It's about keeping Krishna in the center. So when, if we see that happening, that we're looking for, you know, star performance, then uh, we should be very careful to, you know, go, bring it back to Krishna. And even if the devotee somehow or other finds himself getting praised or getting some eulogies, he glorifies Krishna, he glorifies his spiritual masters as, as the reason why he's doing what he's doing, or she's doing whatever she's doing. In other words, keeping Krishna in the center, even when you are put in the center, by acknowledging the fact that whatever you can do or say is is that is beneficial is coming from Krishna, coming from the spiritual master. That's humility, but it's humility is not just some feature of um, of acquiescing to a situation. Humility actually is reality. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Sri Devi Mataji, please go ahead, Mother, with your question. Thank you, Anusia. Please accept my humble obeisance, dear Guru. Guru Maharaj, just as Anusia was saying this question, how we can never hope, you know, that, oh, Krishna will see me, but we must try as much as possible to do our duties very sincerely, somehow, how, um, how can we actually feel satisfied with whatever service we are doing? Because do your, best. do your best and put your attention into it and try to do it in the best possible way. And thinking it's for Krishna, it's for the, it's to inspire the devotees, it's for Krishna. <laughs> Put your heart and you put your heart into it, put your attention into it. Think about how, how to perform the activities. You may have done that same activity in the past. Now you think, how can I improve on it? Quality is also a feature of bhakti. It's not bhakti itself, but it's a feature of bhakti. It shows that the, the, the devotee wants to do, do it in the most nicest way. It's like when you want to do something for someone, you might do it in a nice way. But what is really the essence of the relationship or the exchange is uh, the desire to please. Mm. Dissatisfied, it means we have not paid attention or done not done that service nicely to the best of our capacity. Could be. Or you might have had expectations and uh, and therefore you felt like you didn't reach those expectations, but still Krishna is pleased. It's like you give class before, right? Yes, Guru. So you might think, oh, well, that class I gave, it wasn't so good. But everyone will come up and say, wow, that was a nice class. So you might feel like that, but it, it might be something actually different. Okay. Thank you, Guru. Well, that feeling is just you wanted to do better and you felt like somehow or other it didn't go 
the way you want it to go. Yes, Guru Maharaj, striving to do it better and constantly meditating on how to do it better rather than taking it as a routine. Oh, I've done this many times, so I'll just do it, you know, like I usually do it. Get into a rut and go on automatic pilot. And that's where I think. Yeah. That can happen. Yeah, especially if we're tired and we're not so enthusiastic because we're tired. Or there's something else on our mind, and we were, we were thinking about that while we're doing. All of these things can divert our attention away from the service and make it less offerable. So there used to be a saying that the devotees we grew up with was called "Be here now." In other words, wherever you are, be there. Don't be in the future. Don't be in the past. Be where you are. Maharaj, just to piggyback on Sri Devi's question, um, she she asked a nice question, and I would like to ask this, you know, to add to the question, Maharaj, is that. Um, at the same time, how can we not be attached to the service where we own it? Like we we perform the service because we are accountable and responsible, but at the same time, it's not like it's I my service and I'm not going to give it up. You know, as uh, because sometimes devotees, I I, I know uh, Mother Rajiga, but she used to always tell me, you know, in my earlier days, that service. Um, is meant to be shared because we get mercy from it. But at the same time, there are situations where, you know, people, the devotees, they are so attached, they don't want to give it up because they feel that they can do it better than everyone, than anyone. So how can we overcome that unhealthy attachment, Marge? <laughs> when you understand the service is not for you, for Krishna, it's for the devotees. Service means, you know, service in the material world is like you go to work and you get paid. It's very, but service in the spiritual world is, it's not like you're looking for something in return. You're looking for the opportunity to serve, the opportunity to please. So in the beginning of Krishna consciousness, when we first knew, we're still looking to get some reciprocation for what we do, because that's our mom, that's the way we've always worked according to the material energy. Now we take that same consciousness into spiritual life, but then we start to understand that service itself uh, has different levels, and selfless service is the highest form of service, or unmotivated service. So then we gradually try to work towards that stage by giving the first the results of the fruits of activities. Uh, first, and then we also offer our service when we perform it. And we think of Krishna, we remember Krishna when we do our service, if we can, the best we can. We can also remember Krishna while we're, while we're serving Krishna, serving the devotees of Krishna. But the eagerness to do service is not wrong. It's just if you get to the point where it's you're being asked to do something different or share it with someone else, then you shouldn't be reluctant. You, it's all right to be attached to your service, but don't be attached to uh, the idea that it's your service. <laughs> Who said it was, who said you owned it? <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Any? Yes, Mother Gita, please, Mother. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. I'll go to Shila Prabhupada. All glories to you. Thank you so much for your association. 
I wish it was every Thursday. <laughs> um, Maharaj, we were talking about keeping Krishna in the center of all our activities. So what should one do to be aware all the time? Are we keeping Krishna in the center of our lives? So is there a way we could do that? There's a couple of ways. One is to make sure that in the execution of your devotion and service, you're following instructions of your spiritual master. And so you know, well, I have to do this service, so how can I do it? So you may have some idea how to do it, but you also may ask your spiritual master how, how you can even do it better or even do it um, with more uh, attention. In other words, follow and try to align yourself with the instructions of the spiritual master when you perform your devotional service. That's the main thing. Uh, so, uh, in other words, if you're if you're hearing a class, be very attentive. That's that's service. If you're hearing but your attention is being diverted occasionally, that means that you're you are not completely uh, in the mood of serving. I mean, your, your attention is, so I want you to hear with rapt attention. That's one way to serve when you're listening to class. The speaker should also be thinking how to give a nice class and should be praying to his spiritual master and to the Lord on how best to present the class. That's an example only. If you're cooking, and you're, you know how to cook, and you've made the set of preparation so many times. So you just follow what you normally do, but you always think, maybe I can make it better this time. <laughs> so putting quality in, putting attention in, not getting diverted away from the activities, remembering who it's for, all of these things uh, help to increase both the quality and the quantity of our devotional service. Mostly remembering who it's for. That's the main thing. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Mother Gita. Any questions from... Yes, Dar Krishna, go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Welcome to Srila Prabhupada. Sorry Maharaj, I'm driving, so cannot uh, switch on my camera. Uh, Maharaj, one question. Um, how, how to, how to, um, how to accept the feedback in our services due to, due to our false ego, it's very difficult sometimes to uh, <laughs> know that I, I'm not doing my services in the right way or, you know, uh, you mean, you mean Mother Amasuya is telling you to get it <laughs> Well, what do you think, Anasuya? What, what does he need to do? <laughs> Marge, I rest my keys. <laughs> okay. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> it's okay, Marge. I don't mind. Or maybe it's the wife. <laughs> I, I will go with the second option. <laughs> and it, it, just not from the authorities or, you know, just even from our uh, devotees who uh, we are friends with or colleagues with. Uh, it depends on our mood. Sometimes I feel we are sometimes we are ready to take the feedback and corrections, but sometimes uh, depending on our level of ego, we just block ourselves, and that affects the service, the quality of service. You, you know, you drove me from Philadelphia to, uh, to Pennsylvania. Remember what I did to you? <laughs> I'm still following, and I'm a better driver, Maharaj, right now. <laughs> <laughs> you remember, don't you? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Never, will never forget. And you were so sweet and so humble and so... Uh, willing to make it better. I thought, wow, I want to go, I want to drive with this person more. <laughs> Thank you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> so I thought, I thought you were, were quite really open to 
improvement. And I'm a big critic anyway, so. You know, so. <laughs> and your wife was there. She was, I think, I don't know what she did, but I think she was very quiet during the whole time. <laughs> But forgive me, I was tired. That was a long day. <laughs> and it was late. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, we can always recollect. Well, if someone is saying something about us, we can think, maybe I can improve. Maybe there's some something there that I can, I can learn from something I can improve on. So if we think like that, then we're always in a good position to make improvement and to avoid any kind of anxiety. We should not think we're perfect and we don't need any improvement. If we think like that, then Krishna will show us that, yeah, here's where you need to improve. <laughs> I mean, it's happened to me so many times, get criticism or feedback that is sometimes a little hard to process. When you take a little time and you think about it, and you, you pray to Krishna to help you understand it better, you'll find that there's always something in it that you can gain from. Thank you. <coughs> thank you, Maharaj. Thank, thank you, Maharaj. Thank, thank you, Maharaj. No, uh, I mean, I just... Yeah, okay. I just, just loved what, what Maharaj just said that if we don't listen or get the feedback nicely, uh, that's so true. Krishna will make the way for that feedback in some way. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. That could be yep. even more painful. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Maharaj. And thank you for that uh, very important lesson <laughs> that you gave to me. Uh, it, is, it is very, very useful. Even I'm enjoying that lesson, even today. <laughs> yeah, that was a very pleasant ride back. <laughs> he has gotten better, Maharaj. I have to say, he did tell me the past time it was so sweet and he has gotten better. <laughs> okay, Maharaj, okay. now I'm a bona fide driver. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like one of these, you know, guys that find fault all the time. <laughs> Marge, I, um, it's um, we 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 actually need that because some sometimes we <laughs> our mind becomes such a rascal that we th like you said right we think that we know it all and we think that we know what's best and we think that okay I got to figure it out so sometimes the Lord speaks to us devotees and you are helping us Marge. Well, I'm just in mostly in the area of driving anyway. <laughs> I, I remember, Marsh, when, when you, you would come to Kitanagri in the 90s with your, I think it was a Dodge or a Ford van, right? Yeah, Dodge. <laughs> Dodge, I remember that. Yeah, I used to sleep in it. <laughs> Marsh, walking into that van was like walking into Mini Vaikuntha. It was so amazing. Like he, he was like an ashram altar, all in it. It was amazing. Yeah, most of my life in Krishna consciousness has been on the pave on the road, <laughs> either in airplanes or in. When I in my last flight, I just took from uh, from uh, from uh, London to Zagreb. It was the, the beginning of the end, the very end of April. And the uh, stewardess, she came over with a big smile and handed me a card. <laughs> and she said, this is for you. <laughs> and then uh, 
I opened it and it was congratulations. I'm from big British Airways wants to congratulate you on your hundredth flight with our with our and it was nice. They said some nice words, you know. <laughs> so they gave me a card saying you had you this was your hundredth flight. <laughs> And then when I was walking out, the captain came out and he had a big smile on his face and the steward was there and there was another lady there and they were all feeling proud that they had a passenger who had a hundred flights and he's happy about it. <laughs> and I was, well, as I was walking off, I said to them, I'll always remember this flight. And they all got their smiles even got even bigger. So it was so nice. <laughs> it was a nice sweet exchange, you know. And that's only one airlines VA. I've been on many airlines, thousands of it, hundreds and not hundreds, but dozens of different airlines. Mm. Amazing marriage. But to speak of one on the ground <laughs> <laughs> air and ground yeah is this go ahead mamina hari krishna guru maharaj uh, dandavat pranam please accept my humble obeisances all glories to prabhupad all glories to you hare krishna oh, my heart is beating so fast i can't even talk <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry I'm, i'm not supposed to give people uh and adrenaline adrenaline why rush <laughs> uh, <laughs> take a few uh, deep breaths and relax <laughs> yeah i i have a question like uh uh why do we always uh uh discriminate uh materialistic and spiritualistic i don't understand that that discrimination <clears throat> uh for me like whenever i'm working uh it's like meditation for me so i really don't understand that discrimination like going to temple and working with children is same for me yeah <laughs> mm. that's that's a high stage of consciousness <laughs> very high when one sees all of those activities in relationship to to Krishna the devotional service mm, that's what we aspire for because that is full krishna consciousness <laughs> when we do everything as a service to the lord whether we're taking care of children or uh, maintaining the household or you know driving to work it's all about devotional service but well, then one has to see that krishna is there and because i'm a devotee everything i do is for krishna that's the idea we don't have a separate life everything is for krishna thank you so that's that's that is that is krishna that's krishna consciousness <laughs> that's the best yeah so yeah you should be happy <laughs> i don't know but i am uh, very fearful sometimes like uh, i don't know i can't express i don't really know <laughs> Yeah. We belong to Krishna 24 hours a day, not just when we're doing spiritual direct activities. The so-called material activities that we do as a devotee are called gona bhakti, G A U N A, gona bhakti. Gona bhakti means parallel to to the, to our devotional activities. they are powerful they're parallel they're supportive and on the highest platform they're non different mm -hmm.
Manaseo deho geho yo kitchen more arpi lutu arpate nanda kisho. Bhakti Vinoda, of course, sings that song. Manaso deho geho yo kitchum more arpi lun to alpade nanda kisho. My dear nanda kisho Krishna, my home, my family. My possessions, my very life, everything, it belongs to you. <laughs> Bhakti Vinoda Thakur sings. My family, everything, it's yours. <laughs> Maharaj, if, if I can add one more uh, uh feedback to Mamina's question, I'm thinking, and Mamina, you can let me know if I got it right or wrong, is much we've heard from the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and from our acharyas, you know, how we have to also avoid non-devotee association. So I'm thinking what Mamina is trying to ask is um, she sees both material and spiritual, so she, you know, materialists and spiritualists on the same level because she works with kids, but at the same time we are told, you know, um, to avoid devotee, uh, to avoid non-devotee association. If, if that's what you're trying to ask, Mamina, what is it? You know, what's the difference? Uh, no, Mataji. No. Okay, go ahead. No. No. Okay. But she no, said, because... yeah, she said it's a meditation that when she works with children, it's a meditation. When she goes to the temple, it's a meditation. So, uh, can I say something, please? Yeah. So what I wanted to actually share is like uh, I spend more uh, time in my work with children than in temple. But uh, I feel the same thing. I think uh, uh, I just, just don't know how to express. Like uh, I still feel like I am in my service. And uh, when uh, I am in temple, I am just uh, within the pure souls. But when I am in the materialist world, I don't know if they are pure or impure. But my, um, I, I wouldn't say my, like Krishna's blessing. Like I can't see any difference and I feel more dedicated to work for them. And I feel very satisfied with their progress and everything. Good. And give them Krishna too. <laughs> if you can give them Krishna too, then they'll be very happy. <laughs> they say whatever makes you happy, give it to somebody else. That will make them happy too. Mm -hmm. And also uh, for us, like uh, Krishna cons consciousness uh, is spirituality. But when I meet other people, uh, I mean adults with whom I'm working, when I talk to them, when they share uh, their life and their experience, sometimes I feel they are spiritual also. But uh, we are more uh, in a very uh, defined, regulated path but they are not, but still they are spiritual. Well, for the sake of function, we discriminate between material and spiritual. But on the highest level, everything is spiritual. You can't function on the highest level. We have to make a distinction between what is beneficial and what is not beneficial. What is uh, going to further Krishna consciousness and what's going to take away from Krishna? We have to make that discrimination. Mm -hmm. But on the highest level, everything is working under the control of Krishna. So even the material, even the materialists are serving Krishna by serving their material energy. But we can't function on that level because. That's the function of the highest, the highest pure consciousness, where they don't see any difference between material and spiritual. Everything for them is spiritual. But if you're functioning day to day and you have to get things done and you have to interact with different people, 
we have to discriminate between what is right, what is wrong, what is beneficial, what takes away from the success, what is spiritual, what is material. On that level, we can function. But on a higher level, everything is spiritual. You can't just go up and say, well, Mr. Tiger, yes, you also are a spiritual being, so let me embrace the tiger because he's a spirit soul. <laughs> but, you know, he'll just chew you up for breakfast. You know? <laughs> so, so we have to make some, some, distinct, some discrimination in order to make, things, make sure things go on in the proper way. That's all. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, there's a question here by Devananda Pandit uh, Prabhu, and he said, Hare Krishna, all glories to Sri Prabhupada, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I know that chanting Maha Mantra is not a religious activity, but a spiritual activity. Is our sadhana, except for chanting, a religious activity, or is it also, or is it also completely spiritual? Religious activity means things to do and things not to do. It's more like what's favorable for, for spiritual activity is religious. Religious means codes, rules, and regulations, functions. Actual spiritual activities are devotions to Krishna. So anyone, when you engage in devotional service to Krishna, that activity is spiritual. It's, it's maybe, it may be supported by religious principles, but it's just like no illicit sex, no intoxication, no mediating, no gambling. These are uh, items of knowledge, they're religious principles. But they're, they are nishedas, things to avoid. So the other side, for, for example, um, it says, uh, Take, prashad, take uh, spiritual foodstuff and avoid material foodstuff. In other words, take prashadam and don't take boba. So that's a rule, that's an injunction. And if you follow that, then you're connecting to the spiritual energy. That's what it means. So religion is more like religious principles or a guideline. And the activities itself are, are spiritual when they are uh, follow when we follow the instructions of the spiritual master, then we are engaged in devotional service as spiritual. Thank you, Maharaj. And there, Krishna put a nice uh, uh, post saying that thank you, Maharaj, uh, for clarifying why discrimination is needed in spiritual life using the example of the lion. Yeah. Tiger, lion, yeah. One of them, ferocious animals. <laughs> 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 Sorry, Marge. <laughs> um, it's okay. I could have said lion. <laughs> no, he put he put lion. I thought you said tiger. I then I lion. I said so oh. one of the, fur, the the voracious animals. <laughs> they all eat people. <laughs> they are voracious. I could have said rhinoceros too. <laughs> <laughs> Marge, if if I can ask a question because I, I uh, because sometimes uh, it's a nice question that Mamina asked. Um, because sometimes as devotees and, you know, some of us who are practicing and, um, you know, trying to understand the, uh, the balance or the differences, sometimes we get so, um, you know, we are not clear with the differences between, you know, material and spiritual, but then um, we get caught up looking at things as, you know, um, equal, but at the same time, we need this discrimination. So how can we really, um, especially Marge, you know, in, in working life 
spiritual life, how can we really distinguish, just, you know, be, how can we be discreet between material and spiritual and at the same time try to look e with, with, with an equal vision? Well, you know, Sanatana Goswami gives the six principles that make up surrender and devotional service. And the six principles are, the first one is Anukulena, and the second one is Pratipo. These are the first two mentioned. Anukulena means to accept everything favorable for devotional service. Pratipo means to reject everything unfavorable. So that's how we function. Thank you, Maharaj. And, and that's what's going to help us not yeah. see everything on the same level. Yeah, what's favorable, what's unfavorable. Thank you, Mark. Then, then you have to know also what's favorable and what's unfavorable. Yes, because because I, I was thinking, like in my job, you know, I, I don't work with kids, but I work with, uh, with finance and I deal with people that always uses cuss words and I have to <laughs> shut my ear because it's so unfavorable. And you just, just tell them it's very low class to use words like that. And that's what I always think. In fact, I, I actually tell them to, uh, I get really rude. I tell them to just shut and keep quiet and hang up and tell them to rephrase the sentence. That's what I tell them. There <laughs> was, was one devotee. He was, um, he, was a, he owned a, a corporation and he had many employees. And one of the rules is anyone who was using bad words would get fired. <laughs> Lose your job. That was, they, they're told that ahead of time. You can't use these. Yeah. You get fired. I love that rule. Because that's really, that's really low class. And it's yeah. really, really, yeah. it's, it's really like, uh, mm -hmm garbage to the ears oh, it's just... it, it, it in fact uh, they've when i started working with the companies like 15 years ago it was really bad until i think at, at one point we started charging them a dollar <laughs> per password <laughs> and it started subsiding but now lately i've just been i i just i just mute or hang up literally Mark, just mute or i hang up and i just tell them to just leave me alone like something but i was just thinking how um that is so unfavorable so i cannot look at it equally yeah when i use yeah. like words like that it's an it's an expression of anger also and they're putting their anger at you so Mars, there's another question. Is, is this a question? Oh, let me see. This is. No. Oh, no, no. It's Prichard's comment. He says temple activity involves. Oh, that's a nice one. Temple activity involves association with devotees of, the, of Krishna. The workplace for most of us does not involve association of devotees. Yeah. Just a comment. Yes, Mars. It's, it's a comment. Yeah, he posted a, a, a comment. Yes. And yeah. that's a question so, here. So, by... so, Sorry, so, Marge. Yeah, so uh, eventually, I mean, Prabhupada did, didn't want us to work for the non devotees. We have to try to get out of that and uh, either work with devotees, create your own jobs, work from home. The association is really, it just pulls you down. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, that's a question by Kanchanamja Prabhu. Uh, you can go ahead with the question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please set my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Nice to see you, Maharaj, and nice to hear from you. Um, Maharaj, I just had, I had a question regarding um, serving the spiritual master. And um if if a disciple wants if a disciple has a desire to serve the spiritual master um but, but is and, and wants to take up a particular project for the guru 
um, but at the same time feels that doesn't know whether they'll be able to complete the project, do well in the project. Um, should the disciples still give it a try, but that might lead to the, the spiritual master may become displeased that it didn't get finished or it wasn't done properly, or should the disciples still make an effort to to do the service because they know, they can see that the spiritual master would like this service to be done? Well, if he likes it to be done, then go ahead and do it. Obviously, that's it. But if you're creating something on your own, and uh, then you're not sure if he's going to be pleased or not, whether you can finish it or not, then then you're in uh, you're in kind of like uh, shaky ground. So what you should do is get approval before you go ahead with one's own ideas. And get sanction, get approval, get recommendations, get advice from others. Uh, you know, I, I I had a situation where I had to make a you know pretty uh, major decision in my devotional service. So I was asking different people, and I was getting different responses. Some were saying yes, some were saying no, some were giving something in between. But my my focus was I'm trying to hear that voice that will really convince me about what I should do or not do. And then I found that person who spoke it, and it was Bhakti Tirta Swami. And when he spoke it, it was Zoom. All I, I, had, I heard the same thing being said from others. But when he spoke it, it went right to the heart. And then I got to understand this is Krishna. So, yeah. So you want to also ask people who you feel who are qualified to give the proper understanding, answer, somebody you know, somebody knows you better. So yeah. it doesn't hurt, you know, to take your time before you start something. Okay. And and if we take some, if we take up service for um, our seniors, and the fear of not what does that Maharaj, the fear of not taking up the service because we feel and, and the, the devotee does want that service done. We know that that's a project that the senior devotee or the guru does want to get this project done, but we fear we fear not being able to complete it or we fear not being able to to a good standard that stops us making a start. Should we still No, you should do it anyway. Okay. And, you should and you should complete it, don't worry. You should do whatever okay. you can to complete it. If you're determined, you'll do it. If you're not determined, you won't do it. Mm. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good, yeah. yeah. Because by the instructions of the spiritual master, it's already done. You just have to carry it out. Now. Wow. Thank you so much, Marge. Hare Krishna. Hare Thank you, Maharaj.